we can now complete the part two of the JavaScript introduction with two uh, complementary topics uh, which are uh, easier than the and less fundamental than the other ones but uh, will help us uh, uh, in understand some practical skills in some specific uh, uh, programming tasks so uh, after studying all the uh, objects uh, and functions which are the real core of JavaScript programming we'll see some details uh, about them uh, one uh, is uh, the topic of callbacks uh, is the logical consequence uh, of uh, uh, functions being able to be uh, used and passed around uh, as uh, uh, regular objects so uh, when you have a, a reference to a function you can do whatever you want with that reference including passing that function as an argument to another function so for example uh, the function here process user input for example that receives a parameter and this parameter happens to be greeting in this case a function itself so one of the parameters of a function can be another function and so in this case uh, uh, the process user input function may call a function callback which is not a real function called callback it's just the function that happened to be passed in when the uh, process user input was called so in this case uh, it's uh, uh, the process user input function will call at this point will call the greeting function because uh, a greeting was the parameter that was passed there so there's nothing really strange about that uh, so we are just passing a function as a normal object and uh, uh, when we have a, an object of type function we can use the parentheses to call the function itself so it may st seem strange to call a, a parameter but when this parameter is a function uh, is not so strange after all this the, 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 the this the, is the basic mechanism that doesn't add anything special to what we already know about uh, function handling but it will enable a, a new way of programming basically uh, having functions that are generic or general because uh, they can do some task and then they can rely on some specific behavior we specify by passing them a function that can customize their actual behavior mm -hmm. so instead of uh, having many functions that do different things we have a more general one that takes a, a parameter fu a function parameter uh, that will specify what kind of uh, uh, specific behavior or customization we want to that function this is of course a general uh, idea uh, by the way, we'll see that uh, there are different types of callbacks and that are used in different contexts and of course at different, they are different uh, also difficulty levels. The easiest ones are synchronous callbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, synchronous callbacks are callbacks where the function being called is called right away, like in this example. So uh, I'm calling this function, I'm passing a function there and uh, uh, this callback here it's called immediately at the same time when it's being passed as an argument mm -hmm. so i'm passing a function to you and you are calling this function right now this is synchronous and this will allow a lot of uh, uh, functional programming that we'll see in the next uh, video in the next uh, lecture uh, where uh, we use uh, callback functions to um, process uh, collection process arrays uh, in a functional way hmm? uh, in that case it's not it doesn't make uh, uh, you know the programming so much uh, complex much more complex because everything still happens sequentially in a single thread uh, and uh, there are no surprises about uh, what happens before or after uh, more complex are asynchronous callbacks uh, when we pass a function to another function but uh, uh, that function we are passing will not be executed right away but it will be queued for a later execution will be executed later asynchronous we don't control when and uh, this may happen because uh, of uh, um, the function execution will wait for some user action we wait for from some input action we wait from the, from for some timing action and so on <laughs> so at this point it will become more complex because we know that our function will be called and our function we remember that uh, may bring together its closure so I have a function that is scheduled there will be called sooner or later and when it will be called uh, 
it will have access to the to its closure so to all the variables that were defined in the scope and closed over uh, using the closure mechanism that we saw in the last lecture so it's something we a bit more complex because we know we are setting out some bombs that will will explode some functions that will be called but we don't control exactly when hmm? okay. that will be another uh, hot topic uh, to, to study uh, synchronous callbacks are uh, very easy uh, we have an example in the sort uh, library function uh, so every array for example is a sort method and uh, uh, we already know uh, we saw that in the examples uh, that uh, uh, we can sort an array and by default it will sort it by uh, the content of the element but if we want to set a different sorting order well in this case these are numbers so it's very easy but uh, uh, we can pass uh, to the sort function a callback function so I, I'm calling sort with the parameter this is described in form of a functional expression but maybe it's even clearer in the format of a of a narrow expression saying okay uh, you sort this array and whenever you need to compare two elements a and b inside your salty sorting algorithms uh, you can take the difference between a and b taking the difference it, uh, gives you something that will uh, return a negative number if a is lower than b and a positive number if uh, uh, b is uh, if a is greater than b so b is lower uh, and so this is the convention for the callback to the sort function sort function should be a function that will return a positive or negative value according to the order in which uh, you would like the two elements uh, um, to be uh, to appear in the final array you don't know how many times uh, this function will be called you don't know uh, which values of a b will be passed to this function this is a, a matter for the sorting algorithm so it may be a a quick sort maybe a merge sort maybe uh, another type of sorting algorithm that will call the comparison function a different number of times uh, with a different uh, uh, pairs of elements you don't care your only job or the job for this callback function is given two elements uh, tell me which one should come first and which one should come later and that's it if you have a more complex uh, array not just of number but an array of objects for example like we have in the lab of course uh, we should uh, uh, be careful of uh, defining a suitable function sorting function callback function to the sort method uh, that will return a positive or negative number according to whether i want to compare a property i want to compare a string i want to compare a combination of properties a, f a function that is computed uh, according to the value of, of other uh, properties and so on so uh, it's up to us to define the sorting criteria and it's very easy to do that because we don't uh, we, we just need to provide uh, the comparison callback we don't need to implement any new sorting function so just imagine the sorting function uh, as all the sorting algorithm with a hole in that in that hole is the comparison function and we fill that hole by providing the instruction to run in that place so it's a very powerful mechanism um, also but we'll see that more uh, more in detail when we deal about uh, functional programming uh, also uh, the, uh, the filter method that is defined for arrays uh, works in the same way hmm? so uh, the filter function will extract an array from an existing array so we re will return a subset of the array um, that uh, matches a given condition a, a given boolean condition so in this case uh, we want only to extract uh, um, those uh, companies whose uh, value is uh, uh, negative for example and separate them and make them apart from the companies whose value is positive so in this case we could take the market array which is defined here and call the filter method by giving a callback function that will return false uh, we return true sorry if the variable is less than zero uh, this is a, a again is a narrow function that takes one parameter stock which is the individual item of the array and it will return a true or false uh, uh, value that will be used by the filter to decide whether this element should be included or not and so we see that the result uh, is an array with only the two elements uh, whose variable is uh, a negative uh, and in the other case if we put a greater than sign we get an array with only one element which is the only positive uh, uh, element in, in the original array uh, 
so uh, we can actually customize very uh, let's say in detail in very much detail uh, all the behavior that we want uh, from these uh, um, from these methods hmm? we are totally free to specify what function we want uh, and then will be called whenever the filter algorithm uh, will require it uh, so for synchronous callbacks we'll come back uh, later when we see the full uh, spectrum of the functional programming uh, primitives asynchronous callbacks are a bit more complex because as we said uh, i'm uh, passing a, par a, fu um, a function to another function a function reference to another function but i know that the, the function i'm passing right now will not be executed right away it will be held remembered and we will be executed when something will happen in the future something related to the user maybe maybe a user action and so we will have a lot of them in the browser when the user clicks on a button execute this function when the moment in which i am defining what to do and the moment when this will happen are separate in, in time they happen asynchronous to each other uh, but in any case let's remember a function has a closure in this simple example before we didn't have any closures but uh, we may have them so it becomes complex because we know that there's a function that in the future will be executed and will have access and maybe modify to some state that is already defined right right now hmm? so it, it takes a bit of to, to, to design correctly the behavior of all these functions uh, something else that may happen asynchronously are uh, input output operations so if i'm uh, reading a file or if i'm fetching a document from a website uh, i know that the, ra the, um, the read operation or the fetch operation from the network uh, uh, will be slow so i don't want to do them synchronously i will in javascript i will start the operation and they will tell the library please tell me when this operation is finished uh, so that it can do something else in the meantime and tell me when the operation is finished uh, is uh, usually accomplished by giving a callback function that will be called when the operation is finished or it will be called when the operation will not complete due to an error maybe there's a timeout maybe there's a read error or some other kind of uh, of uh, mishappening mm -hmm. so i start the operation synchronous synchronously now and i will be notified asynchronously by uh, having some some callback function that i defined but they will call whenever something happens uh, so it's the normal operation of uh, in javascript you will see a lot of this kind of behavior around and the simplest of all these <laughs> kind of behaviors is uh, uh, handling time so i want something to happen later on uh, i don't want to do a polling a comp a continuous comparison with the clock so i just set a timer and so uh, let's say um, let's have a look at these timers in detail here so there are very uh, two very simple functions one is called set timeout and the other is set interval that are scheduling say the call of, of the callback function after a given time the difference between timeout and interval is that timeout will execute the function only once while the interval will uh, um, re-trigger the same interval so the function will be called periodically f every two seconds every five minutes or whatever hmm? uh, so the syntax is very simple uh, we have uh, the set timeout function that will receive the callback function so again i wrote that as a narrow expression no parameters execute this body console.log and then a, a delay hmm? a number that represents a delay in milliseconds so 1000 means one second so this simple parameter will uh, set a timeout where the, the the body of this function like printing hey on the console is delayed one second so i execute this uh, this set, set timeout is executed now then after this console.log is immediately printed now and then the program will wait for one second and after one second also hey will appear on the console uh, because this function uh, right now is defined here but it will be called only when the timeout of one second will expire um, we can also uh, define functions that receive parameters there's a syntax for that uh, where uh, we may define a narrow function with parameters that takes parameters 
and uh, we uh, the set timeout uh, call may uh, uh, may specify the parameters that we need to pass to the callback uh, when it will be called hmm? so it's something that that, that uh, we can do uh, we it cannot of course pass the parameters here in my function because it, that would call the function we don't want to call it we just want to pass the reference to a function so we need another way of storing the, the parameters that will be passed when the function is called later on. Um, and uh, what happens, so the, the, it's, very f it, it's a very basic functionality, the set interval function and also the set uh, timeout function may also return an, a reference, uh, a reference to the uh, timeout object uh, that, uh, that will inst internally rem remember what to do in the future. And this object can be useful if you want later on maybe to clear this uh, um, scheduled function. So I want to set a timeout uh, just to say if uh, the user doesn't reply in three seconds, then I will cancel um, the request. Or if the um, uh, if the timer if uh, um, a periodic uh, um, uh, say um, behavior needs to be stopped because we the application needs to do something else uh, then we can clear the interval or clear the timeout uh, if we remember the id that was uh, specified the, the handle that was specified that was returned when we created that so we can set up a timeout set a periodical behavior and also clear it when we don't we no longer need it so these are very simple uh, uh, functions but uh, may help us to get more familiar with this concept of asynchronous callbacks this is the timers are the simplest way of asynchronous uh, callbacks okay uh, and now let me spend some time uh, really a few slides uh, on the concept of dates uh, which is not which is one of the library types uh, uh, the predefined object in the standard libraries of javascript uh, just so that we can use them in uh, the exercises that we'll do because it's very uh, difficult to find an exercise where you don't have to deal with time and with dates uh, so we'll just spend some minutes uh, just to tell you to show you what are uh, what's the behavior of the um, of the basic or predefined type uh, concerning dates in javascript um, so uh, first of all in the java standard library there is a, a predefined object of type object of course which is called the date date can be called as a function like here and will always return the date of the current moment or it can be called uh, as a constructor function remember you can construct an object by defining a constructor function and they, this constructor function must be called with the new keyword hmm? must be called remember the new um, and with some parameters uh, internally, the uh, runtime environment will measure time in, in, with a, as an integer number, as a number, in uh, milliseconds uh, starting from the epoch, for a unique epoch, which is the 1st of January 1970. Um, we just need to be careful because uh, this time is in uh, UTC, so it's a green, Greenwich time, basically. Uh, so if we are in a different time zone, uh we need to account sometimes for difference between our local time and the utc so actually uh the time zero correspond to uh the midnight of january uh, 1st 1970 in utc but it corresponds to one hour later in our local time zone in italy hmm? so uh let's let's also be careful um what are the methods that we can use uh, uh, for uh, with the date objects well first of all there are four four ways uh, of creating a date object all of them of course uh, rely on the functional constructor but this functional constructor may be called without any parameter and they will create a date object that represents uh, now no? in this day and this time uh, according to the local time or we may pass a number which really correspond to the number of milliseconds from uh, January 1st and in this case it will always be in UTC so in the um, time zone zero or we can pass a string like this that will represent a date 
and so the date constructor will try to parse this string and to understand the day month and year and maybe hour minutes and seconds from that string or we can um, pass uh, a, a, a set of numbers like uh, in the example in the slide before year month day hour minutes second milliseconds so we may have up to um, seven arguments this function at least you may you must uh, have three of them year month and day to create a date and if you want to add also the time you add additional parameters for hour in this case and then maybe minutes and seconds if you need them okay so these are the different ways of, of creating dates uh, of course the parsing one is a uh, more dangerous because it relies uh, on a local interpretation of dates uh, so 316 is the 16th of march uh, or is the tree of month 16 it's a, a never-ending question uh, maybe it's better to use the iso format like uh, year dash month dash day uh, but parsing dates is always difficult and so uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, dangers here so we must be careful first of all remember the new keyword if you forget new you will be calling date as a function not as a constructor and it, the function only returns the now date so it will happily ignore the argument that you pass will always return now uh, if you forget the new year if you get the new year if you get the new year you will always get the now time which is not what you want of course uh, but you also you won't get any any error uh, that's why we all hate javascript because uh, it does the wrong thing and it doesn't tell you um, formatting may be locale dependent so maybe parsing a date in english will be different uh, from passing the same date if your computer is installed in uh, in the italian language uh, so uh, in some way javascript tries to adapt to the current locale to the current language uh, in which it is running but you can imagine how difficult it is to run a javascript code uh, on a browser of a person that may be installed that browser in i don't know in turkish or in chinese or in whatever language they live in and so that javascript uh, will try to understand the dates uh, in their own locale and you are dealing with strings uh, that we, you don't know how they will be formatted hmm. so it's very uh, difficult to deal with this uh, kind of multilingual environment because you, you never know what is the right uh, date format and also beware of uh, time zone because also the parsing is depending on time zone i, I give you this example that i that I stumbled on uh, upon today when I was trying to prepare this, this class. Uh, let's imagine you want to uh, create a date for today. Hmm? So you, you create a date while with the ISO, uh, ISO um, standard year dash month year dash day, which is always the better way to, to deal with dates uh, as a string. It will return uh, the uh, date of today at midnight z and z the defined z means uh, utc time so universal time but if you're trying to parse this date in italian or even in english i tried that also that in english uh, the result is the same so you will uh, try to understand this date in the local time zone and so okay 18 of march uh, sorry it's uh, midnight 18 of march in in, in italy uh, and that will correspond to the 11 in the evening of the day before in uh, in greenwich in london in the U in the utc time so if you are uh, if you want to create a date on the 18th of march you are actually creating a date in the 17th hmm? and the difference is not uh, evident because the new date is the same it's, you know, it's only the format of the string that led the constructor to interpret that date in a different way hmm? so saying confusing is a uh, real compliment uh, that we are i'm doing to the library i would say dangerous hmm? uh, well with that in mind uh, there are some methods some other methods that we can use uh, uh, to parse different formats of strings uh, we can have some methods that may extract uh, some field uh, a date uh, the day or we can set date and month we can change some of the parameters uh, some of the uh, components of a date hmm? so uh, this date object has a lot of methods that we they enable us to query the current uh, date and time or to set the current date and time 
and also to convert it uh, again to a string uh, in a format that JavaScript will choose so we don't have a lot of control over the format or there's this get time method that will return the number of milliseconds hmm? so if we want to go back to the something that is really reliable which is a number of milliseconds uh, the get time method will return an integer a number uh, object uh, that uh, uh, represents that hmm? and so if you want to do maybe some difference uh, uh, maybe it's easy it's easier uh, to compute the difference uh, between the time so get time of the first uh, minus get time of the second uh, and so on mm -hmm. um, just be aware that if you are trying to compare two dates uh, uh, this get time will always return the time also so uh, a date with a time is not equal to a date uh, without a time because this will be mapped on the March 16 at midnight so uh, if you want to if you want to be sure that you uh, really uh, are comparing only the dates uh, and don't care about the time the, the hours and the minutes uh, you must explicitly set to zero all the timing part uh, of uh, of the um, of the date and set it to zero hours minutes seconds and milliseconds hmm? so it actually a low level handling uh, of the dates uh, and it takes uh, usually some trial and, and error and also needs uh, some stack overflow to find the right patterns for programming um, there are also some other dangers like for example in doing the the, the, um, the diff if you want to compute a difference uh, in days uh, well we, what we have is a difference in uh, milliseconds and we, we must divide by the number of milliseconds per day that seems an easy computation to do but this computation is wrong basically if you take into account that there may be uh, leap seconds so in some days we will have one more second in the midnight minute which are very rare condition but we may at least have twice a year uh, one hour more or one hour, one hour less so when we uh, change the daylight time, saving times that specific day will have 23 or 25 hours so this formula is not correct uh, calendars are much more complex than what we learned in the primary school and uh, it's very dangerous or prone to errors uh, to try to implement your own date uh, computation methods hmm? the JavaScript library doesn't provide we uh, with the very robust ways of tech, uh, dealing with dates and times uh, it's a very basic way and uh, so all the programmers tend to do all the date and they so for example even the concept of what is the day of tomorrow is not so easy no, to to compute even because like we saw uh, even the date of today is not so unambiguous to to define and uh, so uh, my suggestion is that uh, first be very careful and uh, second uh, if possible if you need to do some serious computation with dates uh, there are libraries uh, that were designed specifically to take the pain uh, out of date handling out of date computations and uh, the most famous one is probably um, moments js that you find on this uh, website uh, and the guys that uh, develop moments uh, uh, also de um, de de are developing a luxon uh, version which is another a bit more powerful even more modern library which, which with a different interface uh, uh, and or data fns uh, which is another popular library there are four or five of those uh, around uh, and um, all of them are much more powerful they give you uh, more methods available for uh, objects uh, uh, related to date and time they, they ha help you distinguish between a, a date and the time uh, information computing differences understanding the calendar and so on so uh, if you are doing something very simple the date predefined object may be okay if you're trying to do something serious with uh, that involves days and time so if your application maybe has to handle a calendar or whatever i really suggest uh, uh, using this library you just have to uh, download them with npm and then uh, just uh, import them uh, require them in your uh, in your library so for this week's lab it is not uh, worth uh, learning a new library but in the future uh, let's always remember that whenever there is a language uh, shortcoming or something that is in the standard library is not working so well there will be most likely very good libraries around uh, that we can rely uh, 
and we can use uh, in our uh, in our application so that was the two uh, timers and uh, and the dates were the two ingredients that was missing for the last class as we saw it's something very really sim simpler simple very practical that will be needed uh, for us uh, in the lab in next uh, uh, in this week uh, in this week's lab number one so thank you and see you in the next class